The next speakers will dive deep into the NEOS React UI and they will show you how to use its power for yourself. The first speaker is from Russia and eats Quadro Formaggi pizza at every sprint. <laughs> the second is a developer from Sidegeist and one of our newest core team members. Can someone push the button for the jingle, please? Please welcome on stage Dimitri Pizarev and Max Strübing. So, hello everyone and welcome to our talk about Neos UI extensibility and beyond and this monitor isn't working. Should we try to do it without? Um, I guess we can try okay. if it's not fixable. At least we can try to introduce ourselves. Yeah. That <laughs> should work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Nice to see so many people here. And like Tobias already said, I'm um, Max and you can find information about me on Twitter, GitHub and on my blog and I'm a Ah, now it's working. And I'm a full stack developer at Zeitgeist and I'm a proud Team Tiger member and in case you're wondering why there is a three in the picture and not um, a tiger or this funny little cartoon character, it's because uh, tiger is the Indonesian word for three and our team isn't in any kind related to the animal or the cartoon character. Yeah, and I'm Dmitri uh, from Moscow. I work in a Christian university in Moscow and also a Christian believer myself. And I belong to, I guess you guessed it, the Minions team. Yay. <laughs> and there is one thing that Max hasn't said about himself is that this is actually the guy who uses Vim for everything and <laughs> command line. This is just some piece of information that would be needed later. Yeah. I just better say it. So Max, <laughs> go on with your voodoo stuff um, yeah. <laughs> uh, first and <laughs> you'll see something cool. Yeah. Um, let's start with why we enjoy to develop uh, software with NEOS. It's because NEOS um, enables you to build uh, S custom tailored solutions with uh, single responsibility and reusable components and put it together to a uh, very complex software without need needing to adapt some monster packages with tons of configuration options and stuff like that only to find out later that it doesn't work so uh, it doesn't do one thing well you really need and NEOS provides you also with a very powerful planned and unplanned extensibility mechanisms which literally enables you to touch like every part of uh, which enables you to literally um, alter the behavior of every part of the system without touching the core directly. And question, who of you has ever extended the NEOS user interface? Wow. Uh, some people. And how many of you already extended the new user interface? A few few people. So um, what do you need to know to extend the user interface is you need to know React and Redux and its underlying concepts and here are some ACAD uh, courses you can try if you want to get familiar with this. We didn't go into detail in this talk. Um, that's a lot to learn you probably think but it really pays off if you look at it from another perspective because React already conquered the world in the last years and it's a highly wanted skill and yeah, it's the foundation of the NEOS user interface so you need, you need it to extend it. And we will start with a simple inspector editor which Sebastian already showed at last year's conference but we will use it as a simple and minimal example. Um, it's an in, yeah, in inspector editor uh, and color picker to be specific and what we are needing need to do to um, build it is we need to initialize uh, an npm package with is which is done by creating a package JSON. This is the actual package JSON of this um, inspector editor 
And here are two things worth mentioning, and this is the uh, NEOS React scripts, which are provided by our extensibility package, and this build target directory, which is uh, the directory where the compiled code will go. And we are using React Caller as the actual um, color picker later. Um, the, um, here we see our manifest file, which um, we are using the manifest function from the Neos UI extensibility package to register our custom component. Um, for that, you need to know the concept of a registry. Um, the complete Neos UI extensibility uh, mechanism is built upon registries, and these registries are basically key value stores where you store configuration. This got, uh, gets initialized during the boot process of the u user interface and later on the, the values are read only. And here we are setting a new identifier for this specific editor f uh, with the color picker editor. Um, yeah, and we have uh, ma many, many registries for every kind of um, of par uh, every part of the UI, we have inspector registry. We have we have an inspector registry. We have a container registry, and many many more. Um, the editor component itself is rather boring. It's just two functions. Um, the render functions function renders um, the sketch picker, which is uh, imported from React Color, and here two things worth mentioning again, the, and this is the sysprops value and sysprops commit, which is provided by Neos. Sysprops value holds the actual value of the editor at the given time, and sysprops commit is used to let Neos know that the value of the editor has changed, otherwise your change would be lost if you reload the backend. And then we need to build this, and we need to tell Neos to load these currently compiled JavaScript into the user interface. And this is done by this simple configuration. And we need to tell Neos to use this color picker editor for some node type. And if we d we've done everything correct, we, could, uh, we can see this color picker in the inspector and can be used to uh, change the font color or change some background color or something else. And what we've learned so far is we've learned to use the uh, extensibility package to compile our custom UI extensions. We have used the manifest API to register custom inspector editors. We have built a basic cust custom inspector already, and we have used the Neos UI resources configuration to load custom assets into the user interface. If you're interested in the full code, it can be found on GitHub. And our next example is focused on keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> <We Yeah>. <laughs> that's why <laughs> Dimitri uh, said this Vim and keyboard stuff at the beginning. So I'm, uh, I'm try to use the keyboard as much as possible and not to touch the mouse for everything. And a command palette is a thing you probably know. Like every text, ed uh, every yeah code editor has it integrated or. S there are some desktop applications which let you uh, trigger other desktop applications or something else. And I've thought, let's build something for Neos. And yeah, that is how it will look like. And what we are doing is we replace the original application container, which is also defined in a registry. and wrap it, uh, use this application container inside a higher order component component to enhance its functionality. And yeah, this is the, the higher order component where we uh, put in the application container and we are rendering um, additional markup. And this is just, it looks if the state is open and renders the command palette. If the state isn't open, it does nothing. And the uh, mechanism to um, trigger, uh, to, to listen to the key uh, keyboard events is we are using React Keydown for this, and this provides us with, these, with this Keydown um, decorator where, where we can put in the keys we want to 
capture and then we toggle and close this command palette. And to actually use this command palette for something useful, we need to connect um, this our own component with our React, uh, Redux store. And for that, you need to know what Redux is. And this is a screenshot of the Redux dev tools, which is a huge help, by the way, when developing applications with Redux. On the right side, you can see uh, the state of the application. And the state is more or less um, like the state of a single component, but for the whole application. And you can map parts of the state, or if you want, even the whole state, uh, to properties of single components. And on the left side, you can see actions. On and these actions are to manipulate the state. And yeah, the and they can have a payload. And yeah, th these um, Redux DevTools enables you to replay these actions anytime you want. Um, yeah, and what we are doing is we use the uh, addConnect decorator provided by the React Redux bindings, and the first parameter is the state we want to map to our component, and the second parameter are the actions we want to map to our component and yeah that's all we was mentioning here and the actions are um, provided by our own redux store package and we need we need to define these commands and it's in this case i uh, implemented it as a simple array and this array contains objects with just uh, with only a label and the action and yeah, uh, we are using the already um, present react, uh, select box of the React UI components package. You can, we have uh, in this React UI components package, we have literally every component used in the React UI and you can reuse them to not have to build your own. And if we build it and we load it into the UI like with a color picker. We can see, uh, we can use it actually. And if we press control slash, uh, this uh, palette will appear and you can start typing your commands. Um, I've just used these uh, toggle commands for now, but you can imagine that you can do any kind of stuff you want. And what we've learned so far is we have learned to use manifest file to enrich already existing components with new functionality. And we have learned to use the Redux state and actions to map to our own uh, components. And we have learned to use al already existing components from the React UI components package. And as before, the full code can be found on GitHub. So nice. now Dimitri's part. <laughs> So um, I hope you are impressed by what Max has shown. And uh, now I want to, like, I'm not the keyboard guy so much. Uh, I use Visual Studio Code and like, <laughs> not Vim. Uh, but uh, what I try to do mostly at work is to enhance the editor experience of the editors who are working for our organization. And that's like the main motivation thing for me to do the UI because like it's the best way you can influence actually how people how happy people are when they are working with neos and uh today i'm going to talk about trees <coughs> well no uh, not these kind of trees but more like these trees and anyone who has ever worked with neos knows that they are the concept of a tree is very dear uh to neos and to neos content repository we have trees everywhere and uh, that's actually something that attracted me to Neos back in the time. But uh, sometimes uh, it gets uh, a bit too much for editors, which have trees everywhere. And not always you uh, edit the information that you edit on your website is best edited as a tree. 
Sometimes you have just a bunch of entities on your website, like news, like blog posts, tags, or just flat lists of things that doesn't make any sense to represent them as a tree, right? Um, do, you, do you see where I'm going, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going to try to do to build something like this, which you can see here on this picture. We are going to be uh, just have a flat list of uh, news articles, and when you cr click the plus button, you'll cre immediately create the uh, news item of a particular type. Uh, so you don't have to. The editor doesn't have to choose, you know, out of like twenty different note types. And the same for editing tags. Uh, the, the editor would be able to edit tags right away and paginate stuff so you can have like thousand items on the same level without problem which you know may be a problem currently in the tree uh, and also uh, we still have to make sure the original tree would be available in a different uh, tab as well so wh wh what do you think guys does it make sense to build something like this with a new extensibility okay Thanks. Uh, so let's get started. Um, this is how we will define uh, define this tree uh, in the settings somewhere in, in the settings of our extension. Uh, the thing to see here is a query. That's a, just a basic eel query that we will use to fetch nodes nodes for a uh, particular um, particular tab. Uh, this entity thing. Um, so in this example we are using Elasticsearch to get all nodes of type news and all nodes of type tag. We sort them and uh, we also can paginate them via page uh, um, context environment variable that will be coming from our plugin. And also obviously we need to configure the node type and the place uh, like when we use the create new f uh, functionality uh, so it would be created of the right type and in the right location. Next uh, we are proceeding to the uh, manifest JS file like any UI extensibility uh, attempt starts with the manifest file as Max has already shown and in this case we are going to be using the containers registry again to replace the original um, tree with our augmented tree uh, which would have like tabs and uh, uh, basically what you just saw and um, another thing we will need another API that we will use here in this example is the uh, ability to get this front-end configuration from settings uh, into your actual client-side code. And for this we will use the front-end configuration uh, and we will get all uh, all of it in as a props in our uh, React component just by using this single line of code. Uh, also we would somehow need to fetch all the nodes for our uh, um, flat navigation uh, from the server side. Uh, to generate those nodes I just used a simple flow um, controller. I guess you all know how to create anything of, the, of this kind. It's just a few lines of code so that's not really my department. Uh, I don't want to be embarrassed of my PHP code so I'm not going to show it. <laughs> and um, we are using the uh, utility function uh, which is coming from uh, React UI which is called fetch with error handling. And it's basically just a fetch, uh, but it also does error handling in a nice native Neos way and would show you a big red sc error screen whenever something wrong happens, <laughs> like we all love. And yeah. Uh, also, to show uh, no type icons in the tree, we would need to somehow get that information. And luckily, we don't have to re implement the logic uh, again. We have the we can use the node types registry and get all the node type information, including icons, uh, for each node that we get. So this is example how how to use it. And that's basically it. We have chopped down a bunch of trees, hopefully with this example. Um, 
yeah, this code should be live. Uh, it's working. I already deployed it to production in my <laughs> company, uh, but uh, it's pretty fresh and hasn't even been like uh, pushed to packages yet, uh, which I will do soonish. Uh, but uh, if you like this idea, you can collaborate with me on this project to polish it even more and maybe add more functionality to this, I don't know, filtering or something like that. Uh, or just take it as an example and do something really custom for your project, which is what extensibility all about. You don't have to take something ready-made for you. You can really uh, get the best editor experience possible by doing just the right thing. Um, so to recap uh, what we've learned, like what APIs we used in this example, we used the front, front end configuration, uh, uh, fetch with error handling and the node types registry to get uh, all the stuff. And um, there is a like very popular question that people ask me is that there were, uh, if you remember in the old user interface, there were those events uh, like when, for example, a node has been created or a node has been focused, uh, like a J JavaScript events. Um, that were happening and that you could listen to. Uh, we haven't re-implemented them yet, but we will quite soon, at least some of them, that makes sense. But uh, while it's not there, um, you can s use the uh, UI extensibility layer to do just those things. And it's not gonna be a fancy example this time. Uh, what we are gonna try to do is to uh, do some, uh, execute some JavaScript code when a node has been focused. Right. So we will just show a flash message with the context pass of a focus node for, for this example. And uh, it uh, involves knowing like a rather fancy concept of uh, Redux sagas, um, which uh, might be familiar to those people doing like CQRS and event sourcing and all that stuff. So basically saga is like a, a thing to uh, help you manage um, uh, long-running processes happening over time. And in our UI, uh, we, for example, can use a saga to listen to actions of a particular type, for example, a focus action, and then uh, to um, execute some other ac action in return, for example, flash messages add, which just shows a flash message. And to register a saga, uh, you can use the sagas registry, uh, just with, as we said, everything. Uh, registries everywhere. Uh, so this is the uh, main idea you should get from this talk, that you should really understand the registries concept if you're going to uh, extend the U UI stuff. And another thing, uh, if we want to listen for some uh, action that happens on return to server uh, side communication, for example, when we are creating a node, we are making a request, an AJAX request to our backend. And the backend, if everything went well, like we're asking it, please create a node of a particular type at a particular place. And if everything went well, uh, then we get the feedbacks. It's like called a feedbacks mechanism that we use. Uh, and uh, it's a bunch of information like the node has been created and with all details about the newly created node. So in this example, we will use the server feedback handlers registry to register our own handler for the node created event, uh, node created feedback. And uh, again, in return, dispatch an action with a flash message. Like in this example, you see that it's a bit different from how um, Max described it. Um, like we have to dispatch an action fr like from the store itself because we don't have the luxury of Redux Connect in this particular case. Uh, but yeah, the concept is still the same. We are just uh, firing Redux actions. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, we've learned to react to any kind of interactions happening in the backend uh, and without waiting for lazy uh, UI developers to implement all the uh, old 
um, user interface events. Uh, so that's basically it, uh, like what we wanted to talk about. There are just a few more things here. Like here's a collection of uh, packages that already are out there in the wild that I know of uh, that use the uh, React extensibility features. And also there are uh, quite a lot of stuff we have already learned today. And uh, also there are more things which ha we haven't covered in this talk. So basically anything like be it, for example, CK editor, custom plugins, CK editor, I don't know, making custom button for adding a special class to content or uh, just about anything there, uh, like secondary editors that open in full screen, like basically whatever you see in uh, our our UI you can extend. And to help you with this, um, I have spent the most boring code sprint of my life, uh, probably. <laughs> I barely survive and that's why I look so sleepy now. Um, I've been uh, updating documentation to reflect the this API uh, and all the registries that are there. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, m m most stuff written there uh, has been written by Sebastian, but it was dug somewhere deep in the code, and I was like quite happy to find it there and get it out. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so please explore these docs. They should help you to get started. Uh, use um, um, just explore the source code of Neos itself. Ask us on Slack. Um, yeah, and that's that's basically it. Uh, good luck coding the new AI. <laughs> what? Ah. Yeah, um, just a minute. Uh, since we have some time left, uh, I just wanted to show you one finding that I found while writing the docs. Is that apparently we have a inline editors uh, registry in our extensibility layer. And yesterday after lunch, I spoke with Sebastian and said, hey man, uh, we got this ed inline editors there thinking, what can we actually do with this? And like, maybe like after you finish a uh, content repository rewrite, uh, maybe we can start some hacking into this concept of structured editing and having like really advanced stuff in line, like some kind of customizable editors. Uh, so I, I did a few things after lunch. Um, yeah, today we're gonna talk a bit more about inspectors. Not this inspector, this inspector. Um, the uh, thing our editors often complain about, uh, like when I'm onboarding new, um, onboarding new editors uh, to work with the Neos UI, they often struggle with the fact that you have this content area where you can inline edit text, but for any other stuff like, for example, date property or tags list or image upload or anything of this sort, you need to open the inspector editor and kind of always go back and forth, which could make you crazy sometimes. Uh, and this goes against the base basic principle of the inspector, how it was meant to be used. The inspector, uh, from what I was told when I first started working with Neos, is meant to be using for editing m metadata, like CO stuff and something that is not shown on the page. And everything that is shown on the page should be editable visually right from there without switching context. Do you think that that makes sense? Do you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I try to hack together this thing. For example, we can change the type or like the layout for this uh, blog post uh, from inline or like edit the date um, without opening the inspector. And um, edit tags, for example, through the references editor, which was also only possible before. 
uh, through the inspector. Like here you see we're picking a new tag for this post and we immediately see it in the tags list. Um, yeah, and we can also upload e images uh, in line without opening the inspector. Like the the UX is not polished, like I only spent the remaining of yesterday for this and a bit of today's night. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> which might explain why I'm a bit sleepy today. Uh, but yeah, basically this is the thing. Are you interested in how this works? Like how to build such stuff? Okay. So yet again, the manifest file, uh, we're getting this inline editors, this mysterious registry. And uh, we are registering our own uh, inline editor, which would be called editor envelope. Uh, an editor envelope because it would take any of the uh, existing inspector editors and just render them inline, pretending that it's an inline editor, right? Uh, and that's as simple as this. Uh, we get the create inline editor um, function uh, that gets, uh, among other things, it get, gets the current property DOM node. And then we can do anything we want with this DOM node. Well, what a React developer would use with a DOM node. Probably he would render something in it from React, right? So we just take our uh, editor envelope and render it there and basically that's all it just works and I was <laughs> like completely stunned by this but yeah um, I mean seriously we didn't plan to talk about this uh, and I'm quite happy that it worked out uh, so easily it means you can render absolutely any react code as an inline editor and you for example in the product catalog you may like have embedded special like t-shirt sizes coded as, as, as uh, I don't know, some advanced editor, uh, stuff like that. Um, and it's, this package is online, you can already try to use it. Um, it also needs a bit more polished when I get some sleep. And uh, when this concept matures, it will be merged into the Neos core and will be available out of the box. But so far it's available through the amazing uh, UI extensibility layer. Thanks to Wilhelm who actually coded this feature and it appeared to be really future-proof. Um, and yeah, I'm quite happy that it worked out. So go on and explore the new world of UI extensibility and have fun coding. Mm -hmm. And you can see the slides uh, if you don't want to type the links here on this picture. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much, Max and Dimitri, for this interesting dive into the extensibility of the React UI. Thank you very much. We have some time for questions. Who wants to catch our catch box? Who has a question? There is a question. Christopher, raise your hand. Woo! <laughs> Nice catch. Good catch. <laughs> okay, first try. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm hearing myself. That's uh, distracting. But we can hear you good. That's yeah. good. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I very much like that idea with the structured editing and editors in the site. I ha had the same thing on my mind and thought, how could you do that? Um, so, uh, the site is running in the guest frame, right? In the content uh, management module. Um, so what what can we do so it doesn't interfere with the CSS and JS on the side? So JS is mostly solved, I think, but we always had trouble with the old UI and CSS and icons and icon fonts and whatever interfering. Well, uh, as, as far as I know, uh, it still interferes, uh, kind of, because we are using the host styles, we are loading them in line as well. And uh, the best I guess we can do is not to, uh, we are trying to use, we are using CSS modules, which have like really specific uh, selectors, uh, class names. Uh, and I didn't have any issues with mm. the 
Neos UI messing up the site, but I did have issues when the site messed up the UI in line. Uh, and for example, I had something like uh, foundation, Zarp foundation running on the site and it like redefined the button like in some evil way. And we do have resets on our side, uh, but like they found something else to break, uh, which wasn't reset by us. So th that's a bit of a struggle, uh, but I guess it's not that bad. Like we, we should not mess up the site itself. Yeah, sure. Hopefully. So. Uh, no, nothing like really clever we came up with besides using CSS modules. Because I, I think right now we, uh, with that approach, you're using much more Neos UI components directly on the site be because before it was just yeah. the inline editing layer and everything else on top in the in the frame. Yeah, right. but you see those examples, yeah, they were all from works, a real, yeah. real, real website. It's a yeah. production website. Yeah, cool. I didn't cheat. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Another question. Anything you want to ask Max or Dimitri? Over there, Franka. Keep your hand up so we can see you. <laughs> yeah, for a question about the flat navigation. Um, where do the nodes then sit? Are they just um, filtered out of, of the normal tree and put into the other tab? Or where, where do they sit in the hierarchy? In, in, in in, uh, sorry, ah, in the tree hierarchy, yeah, uh, uh, you, you define, uh, like, uh, it depends on the eel query that you write. Like, I, for this example, I wrote a query that gets all nodes of a particular type from anywhere, and you define the place where they will be created. Uh, like, you need some kind of storage. Okay, so they have an uh, URL and are yes. accessible. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So. Thanks. Uh, I also have a question regarding this uh, flat lists. Uh, is there or uh, will there be an option uh, to to show or hide uh, this uh, this uh, particular lists um, regarding uh, on permissions? Um, well, there can be any option that you create uh, with this extensibility API for for this particular package. If somebody contributes this, then why not? Like, uh, I personally do not need it and do not plan to imp implement it, but it can be done, obviously. One more question. <laughs> I also only wanted to catch it. Um, so I have a stupid question. Is the page tree in the code really called, uh, called page tree? Because I saw in the code <laughs> that it's called page tree. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not with me. <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> okay, one final question. Git blame. 